welcome back to the Sandy Trail. We are in the last 10, 11 minutes of episode 5 of season 3. After this, there will be a break and we will finish season 3 with the last episode, episode 6, before the end of this month. I promise you on that. I'm going on vacation soon. Been a busy past two months. Um, it will be a busy month. Uh, the June. I can't believe it's June already. Um, but anyway, uh, we will finish this episode up. Um, try to get this done before vacation. Uh, the next scene that we will start with in this part of this review for this episode is the scene when Alexander and Charlotte arrive back in Sanderton with Augusta. It's late at night. Mary already collapsed and Tom already finally arrived back at the house and he found out that Mary uh, fell and she's not doing well. Uh, but now here we are at the scene with Alexander and Charlotte. He is being a gentleman, um, helped her get out of the carriage. Um, and he somewhat like avoided eye contact with her and then she was looking at him for like a quick second before she said thank you uh, to I don't know what you call it. The guy that opened the door <laughs> of the carriage. Uh, but this scene though, uh, this is like one of the most intense but also intimate moment for Alexander and Charlotte. Thank you. I'd have been at a loss without you. You must have more faith in yourself. He still somewhat avoiding eye contact with her, uh, but he was really nice and thinking her. He appreciate her so much, right? Like he has like no female friend, you know. He doesn't have a family member that it's a woman that can see the situation and life experience from a woman's perspective. Uh, not until Charlotte came along and. She is always there for the family. She loved those two girls, like her own sisters. Um, and she knows the struggles, the obstacles that Alexander have to go through in life um, while maintaining the house and taking care of these two girls and making sure that they are well fed and educated and ready for society and, you know, to go out into the world. Uh, but he is not perfect, right? Um, no one is, uh, no parent is perfect. Um, he needs help, you know, in some areas of parenting. And that's where he looks up to Charlotte and listen to her and hears her out. And um, most of the time he accepts her advice and follow what she recommended him to do or how to act, how to approach the particular situation, especially the situation with Augusta and Edward. Um, I love the sarcastic um, aspect of her comment when she said, oh, you must have more faith in yourself. Um, it's, it's just like, oh, like, you know, don't worry about it. Like, you got this. But at the same time, uh, she just said it, like, with a little bit of... Um, sarcasm. Um, I don't know if you pick up on that, but I thought that was like a little bit funny at the same time. She's like, oh, like, dude, like, you know, you know, you know better than this. Like, you know how to do the parenting. Like, you're doing good and you just need another boost of confidence. Uh, but it's nice though. At the same time, she is giving him confidence uh, when she said that. Uh, and it showed that she's very supportive of him. I was gonna silent this part, but I was like, no, this is too good to not, you know, silent it, uh, the volume. Uh, but she looks at him and he finally looked at her, like, you know, face to face. And this is where the intensity and the intimacy <laughs> of the scene, and I think it's just powerful in some ways, you know, like, 
you don't have to say anything. You know, you just look at each other and you can feel the attraction. He's somewhat like leaning closer to her just a little bit. Um, she didn't hesitate. She didn't back away. Um, she was in the moment. He was in the moment. So it working out both ways. Um, and then she decided to do this action, which surprised me, especially the first time I watched this episode. I'm like, okay, what does this mean? Yeah. She had been telling Alexander, right, like, Ralph is the one, he is the one for me, I'm gonna go back home and not come back ever again, I'm gonna marry the Ralph guy, right? And Alexander is, like, trying to, like, clear her head, like, see the truth, see the light, like, you're making, like, the worst mistake of your life. If you marry Ralph, and he confessed to her at the end of epi episode 3 of this season. Uh, but now she touched his hand in this scene and held on to his hand. He accepted her her gesture. And he, I think he swallowed too. He was just a little bit like anxious. Like, okay, like what is happening? Like, how do we get to this part of, of this moment together, like, like, what does this mean, right? And he looked at her, she looked at him. But to me, the way that I interpret her hand gesture um, and the way that they look at each other after she touched his hand and they're holding hand right now, like, right at this second, um, I think it means that she still had feeling for Alexander, but she doesn't have the confidence. Um, she thinks she doesn't have the the freedom to change her mind and pick Alexander. Uh, so it's kind of like a yes and no. Like I really want you, but I can't. But back in those days, I mean, it's a different world. Like you know, history wise, uh, but. Like, in common sense, you know, like, you don't want to be with someone that you don't want to be with. You should take Augusta home. Good night. There, she did it again. She changed the topic um, back to Augusta. I mean, I understand it's very late, I guess I need to go to bed, but I'm like, like, this girl Charlotte, like, she just keep, she tried to, like, push Alexander away, you know, but in this scene, it's so obvious that she still had feelings for Alexander, and then when she's like, when she said, oh, you know, you guys should go home, Alexander's like, his mind switched back to Augusta, like, just like that. And he's like, okay, like, this conversation is over. Um, he said goodnight to her. Um, but she looked emotional, though, when she watched him walk away and get into that carriage and ride home back to uh, Hayrick Park. And it, with that emotional look on her face, like, okay, it did, it did the last moment that we would ever have together before she married Ralph, you know? Like, is she gonna see, is she gonna see Alexander again before she leaves? Uh, because she promised Ralph that as soon as she had done with Augusta, she is going back home to London to, to her wedding to Ralph. Charlotte. Ralph, what are you doing out at such a late hour? I've been walking the streets, waiting for your return. In a way, Ralph is a good boyfriend. Um, he 
watching out for Charlotte. Um, making sure that she is okay. Um, he, like he never gave up on Charlotte. You know what I mean? Even though she had feeling for Alexander, and in truth, like she wanted to be with Alexander, but Ralph is still like a good boyfriend to her. You know, like he has no idea just yet the complete truth <laughs> behind Alexander and Charlotte love story. He doesn't know it just yet, but um, if you see it like on the good side about Ralph, like he is a good boyfriend, like he is a nice guy, even though he is an obstacle to Alexander and Charlotte relationship. Uh, but to me, the way that he stayed in Sanderton, waited for Charlotte to return, I thought that was like out of love that he has for Charlotte. You had no need to. I was afraid you might not come back to me. Charlotte, thank goodness, you must come at once. That is it. You come to two, like, it's like inching, you know, like closer and closer. Charlotte needs to tell him he's not a stupid guy. Like, he's gonna figure it out um, really soon. He overthinks, you know, this situation. He, he thought about it a lot. He's like calculating in, in his mind, like, okay, like, there's like the second, third time that Charlotte made a promise that she would go back home to Wellington after this situation, after that situation, but she's still in Sanderton. She's like taking like the longest time ever um, in Sanderton. Like she's not speeding up to go back to Wellington. So she started to, you know, grow more concerned and having um, doubts and Second thoughts, like, okay, is there, like, another factor that Ralph doesn't know about, you know, what really going on with Charlotte? Uh, he knows Charlotte, like, his entire life. And I think he had picked up on those vibes, like, when Charlotte is not herself. Mary collapsed in the middle of dinner. Dr. Fuchs is with her now. We are gravely concerned. Charlotte? This is my mother, Agnes Harmon. Georgiana was so excited to introduce her mom to Charlotte. Um, Charlotte, <laughs> like, became emotional, like, in a good way. Uh, she was surprised, shocked, um, at the fact that Georgiana found her mom. How do you do? You found each other. I will explain how later. I prayed this day would come. It's such a great honor to meet you, Miss Harmon. She is very happy for Georgiana. This is something that Georgiana has been wanting for some time. Like, this is something that Georgiana has been desiring, like, since uh, she was born. Um, even though they told her, like, her mom died, she, she still felt like a missing piece of her, you know? And she wished, she hoped that her mom was still alive, but she got a second chance um, when her mom, you know, arrived in Sanderton and came back into her life. Um, and now Charlotte is finding out about her mom being in Sanderton, like right there in front of her. Um, as, as a friend that Charlotte is to Georgiana, she is over the moon happy for Georgiana. Um, and I think it was just a, a beautiful full circle moment because Charlotte knows how much this mean to Georgiana being able to see her mom and be reunited with her mom. And I'm glad to meet you too, Miss Haywood. I only wish it were in better circumstances. We must see to Mary. Of course. Charlotte, I bet she is surprised and, and I'm sure she's freaking out inside of her, like in her heart, um, at the news about Mary. Uh, Mary is not doing well. Uh, everyone is huddling at the Parker's house, uh, wishing for the best outcome um, for Mary's health. Ralph, like, left behind <laughs> once again. But um, the importance of Mary, like, I understand Georgiana wanted to take Charlotte upstairs, but 
for some random reason, like, when I watched the scene again just now, I'm like, I just felt what Ralph is feeling, you know? He doesn't belong in Sanderton. He doesn't feel like he belongs in Sanderton. Uh, this is not his comfort zone. Uh, he doesn't really know these people well, except for Charlotte. And Charlotte, like, she knows a lot of people, right? And she technically lives with the family every time she visits Sanderton. And Charlotte just, like, you know, roaming Sanderton, you know? Like, doing her own thing. Like, she, she has her own life now in Sanderton, if that makes sense. Ralph's like, oh, like, I'm stuck in Sanderton, trying to get Charlotte back home. Like, he's, like, in the tug of war with, <laughs> with Charlotte. Do I gather Miss Hayward has returned in Mr. Colburn's carriage? That's right, Your Grace. You're a very trusting man, Mr. Starling. They were not alone. Miss Markham was with them. Mm, I'm not surprised. I was gonna say, like, how did Lady Monroe know about the circumstance of the Harris ride back to Sanderton between Alexander, Charlotte, and Augusta? But then again, I'm not surprised. She loved to stir the pot and gossip and talk bad about some people. Uh, so here we go again. Um, she is gossiping about uh, the relationship of Alexander and Charlotte. And she mentioned to Ralph, like, oh, you, you trust her, like, a lot, like, it doesn't bother you, you know, just like, you're stepping into, like, the personal lives of Charlotte, Alexander, and Ralph, like, do you really want to be bossy right now, and, um, nosy, um, you know, try to get information, but at the same time, uh, Lady Monroe is trying to ship Lydia to be with Alexander, so she probably thinking in the back of her mind, like, oh man, my daughter had a competitor who is Charlotte. Uh, but yeah, Ralph is that guy that he trusts Charlotte deeply because he knows her, like, you know, they were like match since birth, um, and both of their parents want them, you know, get married in Wellington. Uh, but then again, you know, like, if I, w if I was Ralph, like, I would start thinking, like, oh, hey, maybe there's something else going on. But at the same time, it could be that he already figured out, and he just hasn't said it yet out loud. Uh, but he doesn't want to say it, because if he, if he say it, you know, it might be true, right? And that's gonna get his heart broken. At this late hour, how intriguing. Where can they have been, I wonder? <laughs> Hardly seems important now, does it? There is little more important to my mother than what Mr. Colburn is doing or thinking at any given moment. I am telling you, Lady Monroe and Agony Tarman, they're gonna have fight a lot if Georgiana does marry um, Harry officially, if the wedding still happens. Um, but yeah, Lady Monroe, like, like, none of your business, woman. Like, why do you have to, like, gossip and talk about these stuff that, you know, she shouldn't even, like, waste her time thinking about it or talking about it. Uh, but we know why Augusta is in the Harris with Alexander and Charlotte. Um, Lady One Rose doesn't know the whole story, and she doesn't need to know the whole story. But it's really... Bad. It's a bad look um, on the Monroe family, the way that Lady Monroe gossip about other people, uh, which is unnecessary in my opinion. That is because he has a fine house, a good income, and you are in need of a husband. I'm thinking only of you, Lydia. Is your daughter not at liberty to make her own choice in a marriage, just as her brother has? Mm. Ooh, Miss Harmon. Uh, she is, she, uh, I don't know how to say it, she is confronting uh, Lady Monroe's parenting styles. Um, but yeah, Lady Monroe is super shocked. She's like, like, who is this color woman talking to me like this? But we know what, you know, Miss Harmon meant. She's just like watching these people. She's like, she had been like observing 
the Senaton people ever since she stepped in Senaton, right? She doesn't know them much, but she can pick up on um, the current life situation, uh, the current life stage that they're in. Uh, so she's like, okay, Lydia, she she doesn't have a great relationship with her mom. Haley, he is in love with my daughter, Georgiana. Um, Arthur kind of like, you know, to the side. So that's what Miss Harmon is seeing in front of her right now. But she doesn't know about what's actually going on <laughs> between Haley and Arthur, right? Um, all Miss Harmon sees right now is Georgiana and Haley in love. Uh, but yeah, it's it's obvious that Miss Harmon has been people watching. What Miss Harmon said, um, it is true though, like, basically she is trying to say, like, indirectly to Lady Monroe, like, stop controlling your children's lives, because if you do, that's gonna push them away, further away from, from their mom, Lady Monroe, um, in a nice way, you know, in a, a nice question in a nice interrogative tone like uh, maybe you need to watch out what you're doing to your kids uh, they seem to be unhappy uh, especially in their love life if it were left to me i would be married already miss Harmon. but fortunately my dear mother saves me from an unpropitious match lady monroe is trying to speed up lydia and alexander get a wedding out of them right but at this point, it sounds like Lydia is just in the back seat um, of a car and just enjoying life. Like whatever happens, happens. Like she is not trying her very best to impress Alexander. She's just like going with the flow. So maybe there's something else going on with Lydia that we don't know just yet. But if you really Think about it though, if you remember, she had a past boyfriend that she really, really, really loved and that her mom did not approve. So who knows, right? She might, you know, trying to go back to that ex-boyfriend and she still want to be with him. Before I forget, well, he is listening in too, right? Um, they did talk about Alexander, like how he has money and a great house, like He's that guy that have everything. Like any woman that marries him, like would be one lucky lady. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if Ralph like started to think like, oh hey, maybe Alexander is the guy that Charlotte wanted to be with instead. She had been close with him lately, especially after over um, Augustus situation and they went to film it uh, to get her back home to Senaton um, and I also wouldn't be surprised if Ralph like started to calculate like oh hey in the beginning of the season Charlotte you know didn't want to, to talk about her boss like she told Ralph like you know he wasn't a great boss like he fired her uh, she didn't tell him the whole story, but now that he is listening in on this conversation, he probably thinking, most likely thinking like, oh shoot, like maybe there's more to the story about my girlfriend Charlotte uh, with Alexander. Maybe it's more than just a professional relationship. Might there be any more wine, Mr. Parker? I'm sure we could all use something to settle our nerves. I believe there is some left in the dining room. Harry, he's freaking out. Um, he's not his best self. Um, ever since he arrived to the house for tonight dinner, uh, he kept glancing at Arthur. Arthur kept glancing back to him, and then Harry asked for more wine and such, and uh, tried to like stay home and try not to like, you know, let it show, like, you know, what really going on between him, Arthur, and Georgiana, uh, trying to stay home. Uh, but we, we can see, you know, the, the pressure and the stress that he is under. And Arthur, like, 
you gotta be kidding me. Like, you want more wine, like, you're gonna get drunk. Like, this is, like, you know, not the path to choose. Like, you know, you're just trying to avoid it, try to, um, try to hide it by drinking more wine and getting drunk and, um, uh, you know, try to pretend like, you know, there's nothing else going on. Uh, he, Arthur didn't look too happy <laughs> to get more wine, uh, for Harry. And Harry picked up on that. He was looking at him, like, when Arthur walked away to the to the other room, the dining room, and he was just like, oh, like Arthur just such in a bad mood. Uh, but I think Arthur has a lot on his mind, especially after what Georgiana told him at the table, like, hey, what about you know if you two you know snuck around, um, at the house, you know, like the house is so big and, you know, you two can continue behind closed doors. Uh, and that was something that Arthur didn't expect to hear from Georgiana and Harry. And Harry agreed to that idea, but Arthur hasn't said anything just yet. And then the next scene, Charlotte arrived um, in Mary's bedroom. Uh, Tom looked a mess. Um, like, she could die, you know what I mean? And that would be like the, the most dramatic and heartbreaking moment ever in Tom life. Like if Mary like dies, like not only she leave behind her husband, right, but the children too. My behavior has been egregious, Miss Haywood. Would this is just sit up and admonish me? Mary Mary, I swear it we would never have a crossword again. That was that was tough. Um, that was tough for Charlotte to watch and to hear from Tom. Um, Tom saying those words to Mary, begging her to wake up and to stay with him and not die, um, not to leave him and the children behind. Tom realized his mistakes. Um, it's a little bit too late, buddy, you know? Like, you knew you were wrong. You went on to your schedule that meeting with Mr. Price and Beth and Gwen and came back not expecting to find your wife um near death on her bed like on her deathbed basically um not knowing if she will survive through the night uh or if she will ever wake up and recover from this really bad illness um but yeah he confronted to Charlotte um, and it, it just shows that Tom is very open, like he's very comfortable to to confront on that, to share that with Charlotte, that he had been a bad husband. I will never stray from your side or, or waste a moment without your company. There is nothing more important than you. Charlotte got emotional, um, totally understandable. But at the same time, though, I always overanalyze sometimes. Uh, but I was wondering, random question. Like, sh Charlotte is emotional. Uh, she is sad for Tom and for what the family is going through right now. But I was thinking, like, maybe in the back of Charlotte's mind, she probably thinking about her future, right? Like, if she was in Tom's position and Alexander, for example, if Alexander was on his deathbed, Charlotte would be very dev devastated. Um, she would have been very scared of losing him, right? Um, like, Tom is, a is afraid to lose Mary uh, if she does die. Without you, I cannot exist. Please. Please. Another random thought maybe doesn't apply to the scene, but uh, when Tom said, uh, without you, I cannot exist. And I was thinking about Sydney, like, that was like Charlotte, like, love of her life, you know, like, he was the one. She thought that he was the one. Um, and, you know, that happened, the breakup happened, and then he died. Um, by the beginning of season two. Um, and that broke her heart. And she was devastated. She was just like, I'm never gonna see him again, you know? 
regardless if he, if he is married to that woman or if he single or whatnot like she's not gonna see him ever again uh so i was thinking also that maybe she was thinking about you know her experience with sydney and sydney does and like sydney already died like oh please like not another parker family member dies you know like not mary you know they'll be like two parker family members died um within a short um uh, time span, you know, like, not even, like, too far apart, like, bam, like, one after another, uh, that's my other theory, uh, but, yeah, in general, like, I understand she was very emotional and very sad for what Tom is going through with Mary on the bed like that, um, this situation, this illness, but at the same time, I thought, you know, maybe she was also thinking about her love life and, you know, losing the love of her life like if she you know if she picked alexander and something bad happened to him that's like you know sydney 2.0 again you know like she doesn't want to go through that again there's not a lot of claret left i'm afraid i can ask the servant to fetch another bottle i wonder have you given any thought to georgiana's offer no it's hardly the time Arthur is not in the best mood, right? And I totally understand, like, this is, like, the worst timing and the worst place for Harry to ask a question like that to Arthur. Uh, Arthur's sister-in-law is, like, literally on her deathbed. Like, she can, you know, die overnight. Um, she might make it, you know, or not. Um, this is a really serious situation. Uh, and Arthur's, like... I don't have time for you, Harry. <laughs> Think about it. We would see each other as often as we wanted. But the marriage would give the appearance of respectability. As long as you kept a discreet profile. Harry sees the benefits of the proposal that Georgiana introduced to both of these guys at the dinner table. Uh, but what Arthur said and the look on his face, the answer is no. Uh, Arthur doesn't want to do it. Um, she's like, uh, this is very complicated and Arthur would rather be open about it than doing it behind closed doors. A discreet profile. You have me hide in the shadows while you and Georgiana maintain this charade. Even though it's a fake relationship, even though it's a business relationship, uh, Georgiana and Harry, like, even though they pretend on the outside, it's still gonna affect Arthur in a bad way. Like, even though it's fake, it's still, like, very intimate, you know? But Georgiana and Harry have to hold hands and smile and, um, be close together and live a married life while Arthur is like waiting in the dungeon, uh, waiting for Harry to come down and be together for the night, for for example, right? And I was also talking about children, future children of Georgiana and Harry, right? If that does happen, they're gonna make this situation even more complicated. Is a compromise not better than nothing? Is it? How can you expect me to turn a blind eye to this misbegotten marriage when you I love Georgiana? And I love Arthur cannot blame Georgiana a hundred percent because it goes both ways, right? Um so I think that what he meant when he said he loved Georgiana as a friend, like he cannot hate her he cannot blame her a hundred percent about this situation. Um, I think the more important question for Arthur um, to figure out is if Harry's willing to turn around and be like no to Georgiana and, and come back to Arthur. I think that what Arthur is looking for, that what he is expecting from Harry. Like, if you really want to be with me, like, you need to make the move and end the engagement to Georgiana. My dear Arthur, 
I feel the same. <sighs> uh, but Harry's not doing it. Um, like, he's afraid of something, you know? Um, I think he feels his mom, Lady Monroe. Like, especially after that conversation earlier this season. Like, he, like, bowed down to his mom. Like, okay, I'm gonna do what you want me to do. But at the same time, you know, he thought that this idea that Georgiana presented is a great idea, like a great escape, like he can have best of both worlds, Georgiana and Arthur. I'm so sorry, Harry. But I must be true to who I am. But Arthur's like, I'm not gonna be in a, in a, a three-way relationship. And I don't blame him, like, like who wouldn't, like, who would want to be in that type of, of relationship? Would Super live alone and live a lie? <sighs> the answer is no, Arthur is stepping away, um, even though I don't support <laughs> uh this kind of relationship honestly but in like in general in common sense like you shouldn't change yourself to benefit someone else you know like when i was growing up people always told me um uh, like don't change for a boy you know like be that awesome girl that you are and a guy will eventually you know the right guy will eventually find you later in life. Uh, so Arthur's like, I'm not gonna ditch who I am to, and like, I'm not gonna compromise myself to benefit you and your plan with Georgiana. So Arthur is stepping away. He's like, you know, he, he thinks that he deserves better. And he's like, I'm done with it. And I think it would be less stress for him if he doesn't agree to this this plan. Um, it's gonna get complicated, and I think he also doesn't want to get involved in Georgiana and Harry relationship, and he doesn't want to get involved in the way that it can affect his friendship with Georgiana. Like he wants to still be friends with Georgiana. Like he would never try to force to lose a friendship with Georgiana. So basically, like, he's not gonna lose Georgiana over a guy, you know? Like, my friend Georgiana is number one. Number two is Harry. But if Harry doesn't doesn't agree with what Arthur wants from Harry, like, Arthur gonna step away. There is only a little left, I'm afraid, if anyone would care for some. How is Mrs. Parker? She's sleeping, but still dangerously feverish. Arthur was still emotional. Um, you can totally see it on his face. Everyone in the living room uh, pick up that vibe. Like, okay, something just happened to Arthur. Then it is time we left her to your care. I will stay and keep vigil. You should get some sleep. Uh, Lydia, she knows what's going on, um, and she looked over to Harry, too. Harry entered the room after Arthur, uh, and Lady Monroe, like, she knows what's up, uh, but she is trying, you know, not to let it get to her. Um, but then, uh, Miss Harmon, she checked on, um, Mary, like, by asking Georgiana how Mary is doing. We can escort your mother back to your apartment. Thank you. That would be kind. Another half fight incoming uh, between Lady Monroe and Agnes. Uh, when Lady Monroe offered to take um, Agnes home, I'm like, oh boy, here we go, another drama. Uh, Georgiana is staying uh, with the Parker family to keep an eye on Mary. I thought it was very nice of Miss Harmon to check on Mary and ask Georgiana how Mary is doing. Uh, it just shows um, how much care uh, that Miss Harmon has. And at the same time, Miss Harmon is so appreciative of 
what Mary had done for Georgiana and what Mary and her family have done for Georgiana uh, before Miss Harmon came along, uh, came into the picture. Uh, but yeah, hopefully Mary will be okay. The next scene, um, everyone else already left and just the Parker family, the doctor, Charlotte and Georgiana. Um, Georgiana informed Charlotte like, hey, your boyfriend is still here. Charlotte, she is still in that emotional phase right now. Um, she really doesn't want to talk to Val, but I'm thinking this is a, a great time to to confront to him like, hey, I haven't been honest with you. This is what's going on. This is what happened. Um, we'll see what happens. How is Mrs. Parker? Very nice of Ralph to ask about Mary first. And then the topic changed to Miss Markham, uh, what happened in Falmouth. Still no change. You didn't need to stay. And Miss Markham? You have yet to tell me what transpired in Falmouth. She's quite unharmed. I'm glad. As a boyfriend, like, you want to make sure that your girlfriend is okay, right? And that she made it back safe and sound, which Charlotte did. Like, she is okay. Like, she arrived back in Senate and uh, safe and sound. Uh, but at the same time, he wants to check in with Charlotte. Like, hey, like, how how did it go? Like, was it really bad? Like, like is, is Miss Malkin okay? Like, are they home now? Um, and so forth. Uh, but at the same time, he is trying to get some more information from Charlotte. Um, I think he already have that theory, like, there's more to the story, and he is trying to force Charlotte to say more without making it too obvious. I'm sure Mr. Colburn was grateful for your presence. Ralph. Earlier. While you were upstairs, we were talking about marriage. Here we go. Here comes the big moment, I should say. Um, like, Ralph, like, he's very supportive. Like, he's all in, like, you know, make sure Augusta is okay. But then, you know, Mr. Hoban, like, he, you know, he sneak it in. Um, like, let's talk about Mr. Hoban now. <laughs> Miss Harmon asked Lady Montrose if her children were free to marry who they chose. What was her answer? Lady Lydia said that there was someone she'd wanted to marry, but her mother put an end to it. Alrighty, so he was definitely listening to that conversation between Miss Harmon and Lady Monroe, and it got him thinking and um, got him, you know, analyzing what happened ever since Georgiana's birthday party, ever since the first time that Ralph stepped in to Sanderton for the first time. And Charlotte, she's sensing, like, where this conversation is going. And I'm like, Charlotte, like, you gotta tell him, like, like, it's better for him to find out from you, Charlotte, than someone else, in my opinion. I was never the man you chose, was I? Bingo! So, yeah, well figured it out. He's like, okay, now I know what the deal is, like, what happened and what is happening right now. What is still happening between Charlotte and Alexander. Charlotte was like super shocked. She's like, oh my goodness, well, figure it out. And this should convince, um, this should bring confidence to Charlotte to tell Ralph the truth and be like, yeah, you're right. Like, Alexander and I, we still have feelings for each other. This was arranged by our parents before we even knew what marriage meant. Yes. Totally understandable. Charlotte and I have both men, right? Like, her heart breaks for not 
only what she did to well by having that hitch moment at the end of episode 3 of season 3, but her heart breaks for well because she knows how great he is as, as a guy, as a boyfriend, like he is a nice gentleman, like he, he's nice, he's just not the right guy for Charlie. And the way that this conversation happened and how long she waited to tell him until now, um, I mean, it's a lot of pressure, it's a lot of stress. Hopefully this conversation releases those pressure and stress that she had been holding on to for quite some time now. Hopefully this conversation brought relief to her, like, oh, finally, like, I finally told Ralph the truth. You're so dear to me, Ralph. You always will be. But I cannot marry you. It's tough and sad at the same time because she didn't want to break up with Val. She didn't want to hurt him. I think that was like one of the big factors. Like she doesn't want to face the truth, face the reality. Like you really need to break it off with Val in order to be with Alexander. Like she doesn't want anyone to get hurt. Um, she he is so much for Val. And however, like you should. Focus on yourself before other people, you know, like love yourself first. And Charlie needs to do that. Like she needs to do the right thing for herself. And the right thing is to go back to Alexander. But the only way to do that is she needs to end end it with Ralph right now in this conversation. I gotta say though, like kudos to Ralph for the way that he started the conversation and the topics that he talk about in this conversation and how it led to this moment uh, when Charlie finally told him like I cannot marry you like those were the words that we have been waiting for since the first episode of season three you are in love with Mr. Colburn I tried so hard not to be. Then he added in that she is in love with Alexander Holborn and that shocker. She was like, he caught me. And then she admitted that she was in love with him, but she tried so hard to not be in love with him. But it's so obvious, like the chemistry is so, it's still totally there. Like the chemistry between Alexander and Charlie is like, at its peak in season three, like it's just so intense in a good way. I would understand if you despised me. No, I can't feel anything other than love for you. It really needed to happen in order for both of these two to move on in the right direction for the future, for their love life. And Ralph deserve a better woman. Um, he deserve um, a woman that will love him truthfully. Uh, and I say that from the, you know from the kindness of my heart. Even though he is an obstacle to Alexander and Charlotte relationship in season three, uh, but that's how life is, right? Like when a breakup happens, like it means that there's someone better out there for you. That is what makes this so hard. It is a possibility that Charlie thought of like the bad reaction that Ralph could have showed to her, right? Like he could have like yelled at her or be really, really mad, right? But he is handling this like a champ in her manner. Um, even though he is heartbroken and sad about it, um, he loves her so much. Like number one, they are friends, right? And then number two, they beat him a couple. But now they are not a couple, but the friendship is still strong. So that's why he said, you know, like he still has this love for her. Like not the romantic love, but just this, um, like this mutual affection for one another, like in the friendship way. Um, he still supports her as a friend. He supports her to find happiness and 
to be without Santa if he is the one for her. Uh, and I think, like, very soon he will accept the fact that there is a better woman for him uh, down the road. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's bittersweet, right? Um, and I think Charlotte is very grateful that Ralph understood her and that he didn't yell at her or wasn't too, too mad at her. Uh, he listened to her and supported her and accepted her decision to not marry Ralph. Uh, about time, finally, like, it cleared the air, like, you know, there's no more smoke. Like, Charlotte can be free on her own. And she can move on and she can focus on Alexander. She's like, okay, he made the move at the end of episode three. Like, now it's my turn to make the move and um, to, you know, let him know. Let Alexander know, like, hey, I'm single. Like, do you still love me? Do you still want to be with me? How does this compare with your lodgings in Bristol, Miss Harmon? It's a great deal more room, but it's rather less cosy. You realise Georgiana is soon to be mistress of one of the grander houses in the country. Yes, you made that quite clear at dinner. Once again, Lady Monroe is comparing her family to Miss Harmon's lifestyle. And of course, being a duchess brings with it certain expectations. A level of scrutiny. No doubt. As mothers, we want to see our children flourish, don't we? And Georgiana is soon to become a part of the Monroe family uh, that would make Georgiana even more richer and have a high reputation in society because she will become a duchess. Um, and Lady Monroe is like so excited about that, bragging about it in front of Miss Harmon. Miss Harmon doesn't hear about that. All she hears about is her daughter Georgiana and making sure that she is protected and that she is happy. The last thing we would want is for our presence to be a hindrance. So if you should suddenly find yourself called away, this is so wrong. So basically, Lady Monroe wants Miss Harmon to be out of Georgiana's life, but Lady Monroe will still be in Georgiana's life because she mentioned to Georgiana at that tea party thing um, at the restaurant. She was like, oh, I will be close by. I will guide you and teach you how to be a proper woman. Um, when you become the Duchess and all that, and how to maintain that big house. Uh, but in this scene right now with Miss Harmon, it's like, um, let me stay in Georgiana life, but you, her mom, like, you need to be kicked out. And I think it's just, like, completely wrong. <laughs> and not her place to say these things to Miss Harmon. I would be happy to provide you with whatever was needed. I can be quite generous when I want to be. Lady Monroe is a complete control freak. Um, that type of mom that is so controlling and it's not healthy, it's not good. Um, she is very desperate. Like She really wants Georgiana to marry Harry. Um, because Georgiana has money. Like She had that high reputation. Um, Lady Monroe sees the benefits of Georgiana. Um, I think I mentioned it before, but I, I think I did say it once before. Like, what if Georgiana wasn't rich, right? And um, she was a hella woman, but doesn't have much money that she has, like, right now. Like, would Lady Monroe approve it, you know? Like, would she approve the marriage of her son, Harry, and Georgiana if Georgiana didn't um, have a lot of money? Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's her skin color plays a role in Lady Monroe's matchmaking book, you know? Like, would she still accept Georgiana as who she is if she didn't have the money? 
Uh, so, like I said, you know, Lady Monroe is all about the benefits. Like, okay, if this girl Georgiana marry Harry, like, she gonna benefit our entire family for the future. And they will produce children and the generation will continue. So, we'll see if Miss Harmon accepts Lady Monroe's generous offer. Uh, but she's not a stupid woman. Um, I sense that Miss Harmon is very independent. She knows how to be on her own. She knows when it when something is right and when something is wrong. Uh, she can see the bad apples in the basket of apples. You know what I mean? Like she can like target like who is the bad apple. And Lady Monroe is one of the bad apple. Um, <laughs> so. I wouldn't be surprised if Miss Harmon stay in Sanderton and be close to Georgiana, but if she does leave Georgiana again, um, like not to be mean, like that's not a motherly thing to do, you know. Especially after all those years, like if you never found your head, and then you suddenly found your head alive and well, like why would you leave them again, right? Uh, so we'll see what happened next, um, uh, with Miss Harmon. This is the last scene of episode 5 of season 3. Um, everyone is gathered around, um, uh, supporting Mary and, uh, hoping for the best. Um, she's still not awake, um, it's not a good sign. Overnight will be the moment of truth. We will see if Mary survives, if she will wake up um, in the middle of the night or in the morning. Um, back in those days, medical, the medical industry, the medical field, um, the medical technology and knowledge was limited compared to today's time, right? Uh, so it basically like if you got really sick back in those days, like you were on your own. Like hopefully by the grace of God, like you make it, right? Uh, we'll see what happened with Mary in the final episode of season three, episode six, which will be up later this month. Um. Yeah, so this is the end of episode 5. We made it. Um, I'm so grateful because I'm still like in the training phase at my new job. If you are interested, um, I work as a payroll specialist in the construction industry. Well, technically staffing industry for construction workers. My new job is Still the same industry, staffing industry, but it's for medical field. So it's a little bit different, but I get to continue my payroll experience. Uh, but this new job allows me to go back into accounting. Um, I didn't realize how much I miss it because I work at this old job for five years and accounting was very limited. Like, I really didn't touch anything accounting, uh, especially the way that my old job was set up. But this new job, um, it's on a small scale. So, like, I'm, I'm in the back office. Like, I see everything in accounting and in payroll. Uh, it's a much smaller company, but I'm loving it. Um, I just didn't realize how quickly um, I get hands on and how quickly, how quickly I'm learning. Um, uh, my new boss is very patient. She loves to teach. I'm so grateful for her because I was like, there's so many things to learn. Uh, but I know it's a journey. Um, it's a process and hopefully by September, I will be okay because September I'm going on a bigger vacation. So... <laughs> Oh, but yeah, I just, yeah, I don't want to, like, be overwhelmed. Um, I don't want to overthink. Um, I, I guess I'm trying to, like, consume what I learn every day, but not, like, think too much about it, but then I'll, like, freak out and be like, oh, like, what? Um, I try to write things down, too, so I remember, you know, how to do some things and so forth. Um, but yeah, it's been really great. 
um going back into the office i do miss my my room um that is one adjustment that i'm still working on from working at home going back into the office but it's nice to see humans you know say hi say good night um another adjustment is making lunches uh, the night before or the morning of um i've been using uber eats i think i use uber eats twice now <laughs> but i was like i i have no time like most days i don't have time to hurt um it's really bad but that's something i'm still adjusting to but other than that i'm really grateful um i'm still a payroll specialist but at the same time i'm a, a health payroll specialist and health thing is something that I study um, in college and I step away from that for five years um, with the old job and getting back into a health payable, um, I didn't expect it to be something that I enjoy. Like I was nervous like that I forgot a lot of things about health thing, but the concept of like bringing back to my mind. Um, to my memory, which is good. Uh, but yeah, I know it's a journey and uh, they have been really welcoming to me and I'm still learning names <laughs> of the of the staff and the people that I work with, but uh, it's all good and I'm so grateful and I thank God for this new job. Um, I think it's just a great timing, um, God perfect timing. Anyway, sorry for the man, but if you if you are interested, uh, especially if you know me for a while now, um, that's where that's where my life is at right now. Uh, but yeah, so episode six will be up mid June. Um, like we will start it like a week or two weeks before this month ends. I promise you on that. Um, and then we'll be done with Jonathan, uh, for good before the 4th of July. Um, today is June 1st, happy June. Um, I can't believe June, June arrived. My birthday was two days ago, May 30th, and I'm 28, and I'm like, I only have two more years of my 20s. Anyway, not trying to freak out. Um, but yeah, did that, and, uh, next week, next weekend, I will be on the ship, on the cruise, in the Caribbean. I'm so excited for that. It has been almost six years since the last time I like cruise. So I, I, I love cruising. I miss cruising. If you love cruises, like, talk to me. Like, it's so fun, right? Uh, if you never tried cruising, I highly recommend. If you, have, if you need any tips on cruising, like, you can comment down below. Anyway, um, Dr. Rand, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for your support. Um, again, there is a playlist on my channel for Sandy Trail Tree. If you miss any of the season three uh, episode review that I have done so far, uh, I try to keep that playlist updated uh, every week. But other than that, I hope you are doing well. I hope your family is well. I hope you enjoy the start of the summer. Let's be honest, June 1st is like the beginning of summer, especially in New England. Like we only get like three months of summer. See you very soon. And uh, yeah, happy summer. Bye.